Okay, this is going to be a short introduction to K40 Whisperer. K40 Whisperer is available on Scorchworks.com. You go to the K40 Whisperer web page. To get it installed and ready to go, you go down on the web page down to the installation instructions, and there's installation instructions there for Windows right now. Um, we should see something for Linux uh, sometime in the future. And if you're using a Mac, it's theoretically possible, but I haven't done it. I don't have access to a Mac, so. I don't do that, but usually I've had in the past people have uh, written up instructions on how to convert uh, Python programs into uh, using on a Mac. So that is something that's possible. Um, so you could run your laser cutter from a Macintosh computer. So this is the main window of K40 Whisperer. What this is going to do is going to talk to your K40 laser and control it. And the inputs to K40 Whisperer are either going to be DXF files or SVG files. Um, in this video we're going to talk about SVG files. The DXF capability is pretty limited right now. It's going to bring everything in as a uh, just cut. So you're not going to have the ability to have vector engraving or vector or uh, raster engraving or vector engraving at this time. But um, we'll probably see in the future the vector engraving part of it so you'll have vector engraved and vector cut from a DXF file. K40 Whisperer does depend on Inkscape for doing some of the processing for raster engraving so if you're just using DXF files you're fine not having Inkscape installed. If you're going to do anything with SVG files that includes any raster engraving you're going to have to have uh, Inkscape installed on your computer and there's a place in the settings to point uh, K40 Whisperer to the Inkscape executable if it doesn't find it automatically and it should it'll look in all the regular places that it would be and if it doesn't find it it just might need a little bit of help and you can go navigate to find it there. So I'm going to switch over to the Inkscape window. Um, so now this is Inkscape and I have a simple design here and one thing I notice here is the page size is larger than the design and that's something you don't want to have when you're bringing something into K40 Whisperer. So what we're going to do to fix that is go into Document Properties and we'll select here Resize Page to Content and click on that. So now if you see the, the page size fits the object that we want to laser cut. We can zoom in on that a little bit here. Zoom into the drawing. So now, <clears throat> so now you can see the uh, the page size fits the image. Nothing more, nothing less. The other thing that you will have to be careful about when you're bringing images in from Inkscape as an SVG file is that if you look over here, the page the page units is in pixels. And that will generate an error when you bring it into K40 Whisperer. It'll say the units aren't set, it doesn't understand because it doesn't know how big a pixel is supposed to be. Different versions of Inkscape have different pixel pixels per inch and different versions of other programs do also. So it's it's kind of a mystery for K40 Whisperer if, it, if it's in pixels. So if you select inches or millimeters, that'll be fine doesn't matter which one it just needs to have some reference to the real world as to what what the dimension really is that you want when you, when you output from K40 Whisper. So we're going to go and now I, I, I modified that design so I need to save it. Um, so I'm going to go back into K40 Whisper. Open that window back up. And you see it's it's Everything you need to complete a simple job is right here on the main screen. As long as you work from the upper left corner down to the lower left corner, um, you can work through the process from the top to bottom and complete a job. So the first thing we'll do is we'll initialize the laser. And that moves the laser to the home position. And it gets everything set up for, for future operations here. So now I'll go to Open Design, and I have the design I just saved from from Inkscape here, ready ready to go. Open that up. It's going to take a couple seconds, 
and then it'll display the image on the screen. So now it's showing what's going to be vector cut as red and what's vector engraved is going to be blue. And that's part of the forming that has to take place in Inkscape when you're making your design. And everything else that isn't a vector that's red or blue turns into the raster image. And the raster image um, generally um, would be black or grayscale. If it's something else that's going to be converted to grayscale, it comes into K40 Whisperer. So it's best just to work in red, blue, and grayscale when you're working in Inkscape. Um, here I have just red, blue, and all black. So everything's going to be uh, either vector engraved, raster engraved, or vector cut. And that's, that, those are the three options. If you're working in Inkscape and you save the file, you bring it in, you don't see what you like, you can go back to Inkscape, change it a little bit, and then you can just hit the reload design file, and that'll just reload the file that you just opened so you don't have to go in and navigate to find the to find the image or the design that you were working on. Um, it's a quick way to refresh, um, but it'll reread the image from the file, so if you save over it, it'll, it'll, it'll change. So then down here in the position controls, we have home, we can rehome. It was just homed when we, when we initialized the laser. Um, we can unlock the rail, so unlocking the rail will give you the ability to, um, so I guess we'll click that. I can open up the thing. So now that I can manually move the rail wherever I want to, and that's depending on how what your process is, that may be something you want to do. Um, the other, so now once you unlock the rail, there's down in the lower in the lower part of the image or on the uh, on the screen, there's a position, the current position. So I the current position shows up as zero zero, but I've unlocked the rail and moved it. So if you manually move the rail. Things are a little bit out of control as far as K40 Whisperer is controlled. It doesn't know where you are, so it could run into um, the far side where it's where it's out of bounds. So, depending on how you work and how confident you are in what you're doing, you can you can do what you want. But so, if you see, I have um, I've moved it manually, but I can still go in and do a jog. So a jog step. So the jog step tells me how far it's going to move every time I hit one of these arrows. So now I, I can move it 10 millimeters at a time, or I can change this to something a little bigger, and it will move. But now the position on my screen in K40 Whisper does not line up with the position in the laser. So something to be a little bit careful about, um, just something to be aware of. So it will it will allow you to run off um, out of bounds when you hit the arrows. There's these other little icons that look like corners and then this is the center what that's going to do if I hit this corner button it's going to position the laser to the upper right corner of the of the image that we're going to engrave or the design that we're going to going to engrave and so that you can visually see where you are if you have a laser uh, laser pointer attached to your head you, you'll be able to visually see it a little bit better you can also do a, a test fire if you want to whatever it's going to stay there until you hit the ok button and then once you hit the ok button it's going to return to the upper left corner and that's the same for that's the same for all of these buttons so this will the middle one will bring you to the center and then bring you back um, it's just a good way to find the reference points of your design as you're going along. Um, the one, the one funny thing about this is uh, the upper left corner is where the laser always sits, so it doesn't really do anything, but it'll prompt you to return anyways. Uh, it's just kind of a funny thing. Okay, next down the list we have the move to button. Um, that's gonna. So I'm gonna. So now our right now our, our laser position, our laser head position doesn't match what's on the screen. If I go back to move to and, and these two, the X and Y positions are zero and zero. That's essentially identical to doing the the home button above. But what I can do is I can change these the values in the X and Y. And I can get an absolute position. Whoops. Y is negative. Um, 
the Y home position is, is zero and anything uh, moving away from Y is going to be negative just because of a, the way a normal coordinate system works. So now if I hit the move to button, it's going to rehome to figure out where it was to start with and then it'll it'll move to whatever position I put into the move to position here. So and actually I think based on where my my material is there I can move to a different position. Well, still not quite far enough. I can move to a different position and get me position so I can begin cutting. So right now we have our, we've loaded the design, we've positioned our laser head where we want it to be. It looks like it's about right. I can even do a test fire on there if I want to. I'll turn on my air assist test fire, make sure it's going to go where I want it to be. It looks like it's on the material, that's fine. So now all that's left is to manually set the the laser power on the machine so I do that with the dial on the K40. Let's see if I'll redo the test fire and eh, it's about for this I'm looks like I'm gonna do about four milliamps. Got the air assist on and now and I can even I don't know I'll go I'll go one point five on the raster and grave speed. So down at the bottom here we're doing our raster engraved speed, our vector engraved speed, and then the vector cut speed. So I'm going to set those as such here. And to start engraving and cutting, I just make sure my laser's all set up. I got my water pump on. I have the air assist on. I hit raster engrave. And it's going to do some calculations on the bottom there. It's going to tell you what it's doing to kind of give you a clue as to how long it's going to take. And then it's going to do the raster engraving. Okay, that's finished. Now the next step is click on the vector engrave. I'm going to leave it at about the same power, I guess. And just hit the vector grave button. Let's get these calculations. And I, I did have a program so it would vector engrave around all of the letters. So it's basically, it, it engraved, it raster engraved in the insides of the letters. Now it's vector engraving the, um, the outlines of the letters which is kind of a cool effect when it's bigger. When it's this small, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But I did that, did that in Inkscape by selecting the, the letters and then uh, having the outline of the letters be, be blue. And now, of course, we're going to move on to vector cut. I'm going to crank up my current quite a bit here. I'm going to go up to I'm going to go up to about 10 milliamps just so I make sure I cut through this thing at 10 milliamps at 8 millimeters per second should be plenty to get through this guy. Okay, let's pull it out of the cutter. See what it looks like here. There you have it, a Lake Catch a Biggie coaster. Very small, shock shot glass coaster, I guess.